Hey everyone, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Uh, I'm out here early in the morning. The sun is just coming up. It is an incredible day here in San Antonio. I think it's something like 59 degrees or something, so it's really nice. All right, let's get into it. Keith from Toronto, Canada writes and says, Dinosaur George, what was the average lifespan of a carnivore? Keith, good, good question, man. Understanding how long dinosaurs live can be a little bit difficult because we don't have a lot of information to work with. Although there's some ideas of how old they live, we, we look at things like growth rings and in, in, um, in bone, it doesn't necessarily explain in detail what those growth rings mean. In other words, if uh, it, it's not like the rings of a tree where you can kind of estimate the age because we have trees to look at. When we're doing that with dinosaurs, we obviously have very old information and nothing modern to compare it to. So it's a little bit difficult to say. I will say this though, the average lifespan of a carnivore was going to be much less than that of an herbivore. The reason why is a carnivore lives a much more dangerous life. Every day of its life, it's in a fight. Whereas herbivores, they may be chosen as the prospective victim once uh, every month or two, or maybe once in their lifetime. But carnivores had to fight every day. That would have taken its toll. So uh, my best guess, based on the evidence that I've read, is dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex may have lived to be to, in their mid to late 40s. Raptors may have only lived to be in their 20s. Allosaurus uh, may have lived to be 30, maybe 35. Um, it's really hard to say, but again, my, my main point I wanted to make is that uh, no matter how long they lived, they had a relatively shorter lifespan comparative to other dinosaurs. Uh, my buddy Osama from Memphis, Tennessee says, hey DG, hey Osama, it's me again, long time no question. <laughs> uh, I saw this show on National Geographic called Dinosaurs Decoded. Jack Horner said a lot of dinosaur paleontologists have found, I'm sorry, Dr. Jack Horner says that a lot of dinosaurs that paleontologists have found may be the same species. I think I may agree with him 80% of the time. What do you think? Well, Osama, uh, Dr. Horner's a pretty smart guy, and he obviously has access to information that I don't. So I can't say whether he's right or wrong. I do say this, though. Um, it's very clear to me that there have been discoveries made of what they thought was a new dinosaur only to realize later that that dinosaur had already been discovered by somebody else. And inadvertently, it gets a second name. Usually science is pretty good about correcting that. That's why dinosaurs like Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus are the same animal. Is two, uh, two specimens found, both thought they were a new, a new animal, but it turns out they're both the same kind of animal. And since Apatosaurus was found first, his name was valid, Brontosaurus is not. So I do believe that's the case. What I think is happening though right now is I think they're going overboard with this. I think now they've gone too far the other direction. Now they're trying to lump too many dinosaurs into the same family. So I'm excited that they're making these corrections, but I'm very distraught that sometimes we just seem to go overboard with these things. And it's like it starts this feeding frenzy and sometimes in science, we act like sheep. We see which way the wind's blowing and we follow the direction of everybody else. Everybody's afraid to be a rogue. And so all of a sudden you have people piling on and the next thing you know, we've gone too far to the other direction. So I think there's a happy medium there. But I will tell you this again about uh, Dr. Horner. I've never met Jack Horner uh, and I do disagree with some of his ideas, but there's one thing you gotta say about that man. He's not afraid to step up and voice his opinion of things. His opinion may be wrong, may be right, but at least he steps up and does that. And I like that, I have more respect for that than individuals that sit on the sidelines and just shake their head up and down yes to anything anybody in the room says. All right, Vlados from Riga, Latvia. Uh, if dragons lived with dinosaurs, and if they fought with dinosaurs, who would win in a fight? Vlados, this is a, this is a great question. Dragons, that's a tough one. We don't really know what dragons are. Did dragons exist? Did they not exist? My personal opinion is that the, the idea of dragons was really based on uh, early cultures finding dinosaur bones. And looking at these odd bones, they in their mind thought they looked like, or they, they, they looked at the bones and thought these 
were giant creatures and they named them dragons. Now that's my best guess. I cannot say for certain, um, but I just never seen any evidence to suggest a dragon, the way we think of dragons, existed. But let's say for your question's sake that they did. If they lived with dinosaurs, would they fight with dinosaurs? Well, I would suppose they did if dragons were predatory animals. Um, who would win in a fight? That's just too hard to say. Um, you know, if a dragon was a dragon and it could breathe fire, it's hard to fight with a flamethrower. So, so um, no dinosaur would be able to hold his own against a flamethrowing monster. Uh, but again, I just can't say for certain, Vlados, if indeed there were dragons. But I like that question. All right, Kyle from Stroudsburg, Pennsylvania. Hey, DG, I want to know, do any dinosaurs show any evidence of albinism? That, that's, a, that's an interesting question, Kyle. Um, albinism, for, for maybe some of you younger viewers, that means an albino, an animal that's completely white. There's no evidence in the fossil record that suggests that any dinosaur um, was an albino, but it doesn't mean they weren't there. Here's what I think. In nature, most albinos don't last very long because they have no camouflage. They're easy to see. If you happen to be a prey item, boy, you're the easiest one to pick out of the group. If you're a predator, it's hard for you to hide. The only albinos that really survive are those that mankind takes care of and nurtures. Um, in the animal kingdom, you just don't see many albinos, and I believe dinosaurs would have had that same problem. Had there been a dinosaur born with albinism, being pure white, uh, I think he would have been a target so quickly that he wouldn't have survived adulthood. So therefore, if you're little and you get eaten, you're almost always completely consumed. And that's why there would be nothing in the fossil record to ever suggest they existed. The other problem is, is we wouldn't have any uh, way of determining if a dinosaur was an albino, even if it was an adult, because uh, if it has no um, pigment, there would be no evidence for us to even find if we had the ability to find it, if that makes sense. All right, finally, Pedro from Aviero, Portugal. Hi, DG. The African elephant travels in herds, but only the females travel in those herds. The males are solitary. Did the same thing happen with sauropods and prehistoric ele elephants? P.S. You are the best. Pedro, thank you. No, you're the best. <laughs> thank you very much, Pedro. That's very kind of you, and I always like hearing from you. Very, very cool question, man. I love these things. You guys, you guys hit some home runs sometimes. You got the coolest questions. Um, yeah, I'll bet you sauropods. Well, first, sauropods, I'm certain, walked in family groups. I have no doubt that they did. It's a survival mechanism. We see dinosaur footprints where we see big adults walking with the juveniles walking in the center of the group. That then suggests a little more intelligence than I guess we give dinosaurs uh, credit for. They're taking care of their young. That's usually a female attribute. It's usually the female of species that takes care of the young. In almost all cases, there's a few exceptions, but it's usually the female. So I do believe that if they're walking in groups, I do think the group would be made up by females. I don't believe the males would necessarily travel unless it was the alpha male. Then I think he would stay with the group. Since these animals appear to be migrating animals, the males can't wander off too far. They've got to stay within the vicinity of the female so that if a female is receptive to wanting to reproduce, the male has to be on the scene at that time. So um, I would bet you that a sauropod group would probably compri be comprised of a single big male, maybe a couple of young males that are not uh, at reproductive age yet. They would have allowed them to hang around. But as those males matured, I think they would have been chased away. Um, but I do think you would have had rogue males out there and they would have caused trouble. And they certainly would have been looking to topple the king of the hill and take over his harem. So uh, yeah, I think they would have. As for did prehistoric elephants do this? Yeah, man, I have no doubt that they had the exact same behaviors as modern day elephants. All right, you guys, thank you so much for taking the time to write to me. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. While you're there, by the way, you hear that plane flying over? Cool, man, I'd love to be up there. Only I get air sick. So if I was up in that plane right now filming, you guys at home would be playing this game called, what did that guy eat for breakfast? <laughs> Think about that. Um, all right, uh, if you have a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorgia.com and click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. Uh, for everybody out there, take care of yourself, take care of the people around you. For you young people, practice your reading because that's very important. Until next time, I'll see you guys soon.